Well, I'm very excited today to be here with um, Dr. Rick Grimm, who is the medical director of our Echo Lab, and Helga Lombardo, who is our uh, the manager of the Echo Lab, to talk about um, our echocardiograms and the types of technology that we use, as well as how you manage this <laughs> massive quantity and quality of um, testing that you do. So Helga, can you first talk about the numbers that we see in our Echo Lab? So on a daily basis, we see about 300 to 330 patients a day, including the OR and our family health centers. We also this year reached our highest number ever, um, which is exciting for us, 84,000, mm -hmm. which is an awesome number for the, year. For the whole year. Um, and it, it is a daunting project process, but we're very well organized. When something is this large, you have to be organized and have a great team that you can work together and make sure that everything is handled daily and if issues come up, that you can communicate together. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Grimm, how do you measure quality? How do you follow that? Well, um, first of all, for maybe those that aren't fully aware, uh, echocardiography uh, as a technique in, in cardiology uh, is a, uh, the backbone of, of what we do in, in, in cardiology and cardiology diagnostics. It's the most important, I believe, uh, uh, test, diagnostic test that we do in cardiology. Uh, it's commonly performed. It's non-invasive. Uh, and it provides us with just tremendous data about all aspects of the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that it really does not look at in detail are the arteries that mm -hmm. supply the blood flow to the heart, but every other aspect from the heart function, the valves, the, the pressures, uh, the hemodynamics of the heart, all aspects of cardiac physiology are all able to be evaluated with echocardiography. Uh, in, in, a, in a standard uh, test that usually takes between 45 minutes and an hour on a, in a given patient. And as I said, it is all non-invasive. Um, relative to what we do and uh, uh, the, the numbers that Helga referred to, uh, they are pretty daunting, but uh, it's all a reflection of the large volume of patients that we see here at the Cleveland Clinic and specifically in cardiology as well. Uh, and uh, the, the large, uh, uh, not only numbers, but the, the complexity of the cases, the pathology of the cases that we see uh, have basically dictated that we need to be not only able to, to manage that volume, uh, but able to, uh, to perform at a high quality uh, despite that large number of patients that we're seeing uh, and, and that is that can be a challenge, but uh, we feel we're up to it and we do we've been doing this for many many years many decades and in fact in fact cardiac ultrasound here at the Cleveland Clinic dates back to the 1970s uh, mm -hmm. when it was first being performed in our laboratories and and our lab has always been considered uh, a pioneer uh, among the pioneers relative to the development of echocardiography cardiac ultrasound uh, and the evaluation of cardiac hemodynamics. So uh, we have a very proud uh, history. Uh, we've, we've uh, I believe, uh, uh, kept up uh, in every uh, way, shape, and form relative to the state of the art mm -hmm. uh, with regard to what we do. Uh, and, uh, and yes, quality is obviously of utmost importance to our lab and to our, uh, to our uh, ordering physicians that require our services. So we used to think of echo as just going into a room and just looking at the valves, mm -hmm. pretty much, and heart function. But now it's used for so many different things. Can you talk a little bit more about some of the other uses than just valve disease? Exactly. So just beyond diagnostic uh, capabilities, uh, it's used to actually guide uh, procedures. And, and again, that's something that's been used here at Cleveland Clinic for many years. In fact, in the operating room, we utilize... Uh, echocardiography, cardiac uh, uh, ultrasound uh, routinely and have been for decades there as well to not only diagnose uh, cardiac pathology uh, before the procedure and those aspects of uh, uh, cardiac pathology that may not have been appreciated prior to the patient going to the operating room. Uh, but then we also guide valve repair procedures that the surgeons are doing 
uh, not only in evaluating the mechanisms of the, uh, of the valve abnormalities, but then assessing the uh, result of uh, a valve surgery, for example, that's being conducted. Uh, likewise, in the cardiac cath laboratory, now with a lot of these procedures being done uh, percutaneously, uh, rather than as a result of uh, uh, thoracotomy uh, procedures being required, uh, in the cath lab, we're also not only uh, evaluating the cases uh, uh, for candidacy for the procedure uh, before the procedure, but also once, for example, the valve uh, is being placed in the uh, case of TAVR procedures, for example, we're evaluating uh, the results of that uh, implantation and uh, uh, the potential uh, success uh, or in uh, rare cases, failure uh, uh, that we identify as well. So cardiac diagnostics, ultrasound diagnostics are critical to be able to uh, guide those procedures, yes. And Helga, how are the, um, so you work with, there's echo technicians, mm -hmm. they work closely with the doctors, how does that all work together? Well, we have a really great relationships with that relationship with our physicians in the sense that they expect high quality studies mm -hmm. from us. When we um, bring out a new sonographer, we literally spend anywhere from three to six months training them one-on-one, -on -one, reading with the physicians, getting as much um, detail, getting them really to understand physiology, because we really do focus on quality here. And I think having a great relationship with the docs and reading every study after we're finished with it is huge. It allows people to learn both on both excuse me, on both ends, but also for the physicians to give feedback to the sonographers instantly so that they know next time maybe this is what they need to do or they need to go back and get a few more images. But we emphasize a lot of um, time and care on training and then also communicating with the physicians. It's probably hard to keep up with all the new technology and things like that. So do you do training or how, how does that work? from a yearly basis? So a couple times a year, we actually have the vendors come into our lab with their product, and we have from 5 to 7 p.m., we have in-services with the, the vendors themselves, each vendor. We also have workshops that we have in the morning with our sonographers, and we have monthly QA meetings that also does education, and we really strive to hit on all the buttons that need to be taught. Mm -hmm. um, and again, with the physicians, uh, incorporating our knowledge with their knowledge and coming up with a product that really shines in our lab. And you're we're really, very involved with, obviously, education and research. We, 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 we need to be. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I was just going to add to Helga's uh, comments that uh, we, we, in fact, uh, have a, a training and education coordinator that is a sonographer, one of our lead sonographers. We have a management team of, of lead sonographers that Helga uh, heads up. Uh, as well as uh, two, actually two trainers and, and uh, a training and, and education coordinator that uh, does nothing but uh, coordinate uh, uh, lectures and uh, uh, quality uh, control sessions, uh, does training uh, herself as well, uh, and is very active in, in that. And, and also updating uh, new technologies that are coming out. Uh, we're very proud that we, the, we have a, a very state-of-the-art uh, laboratory. All of our equipment is, is really the, the latest, greatest in terms of its capabilities. We feel that we, that's necessary not only uh, for us to perform at our highest level uh, in our laboratory, but to give us the highest capabilities uh, relative to diagnostics. Uh, so that, that is critical, and it's, it's an ongoing, continuous uh, training process. Uh, that, that we, uh, again, are, are very proud of and, and we feel is critical to our success, in fact. So if you were going to express to other healthcare providers or when people come here to even look at your lab, what are the major points that you would point out to have a successful lab? Yeah. Uh, clearly, the, 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 the staffing, the sonographer uh, training uh, and, and personnel is, is critical to our operation. We. Uh, have in the main campus alone over 50 cardiac sonographers that, that we have in our laboratory conducting examinations and we take great pride in, in their training and, and education and, and, uh, and all of them uh, are, are just uh, wonderful people, very knowledgeable, highly skilled uh, and as opposed to a lot of diagnostics that are performed 
in, in medicine, uh, CAT scans and cardiac MRIs, et cetera. These are machines that, highly sophisticated uh, pieces of equipment, uh, but the machines themselves acquire the, the data and, and require, uh, obviously, high technology to do that. But in our case, the images are actually generated by the, by the sonographer, by a human being. And so, again, their skill in, in, in training and education and acquiring uh, those images is, is quite high, and in fact, and I, sometimes but somewhat un, unfortunately underappreciated. Uh, but uh, that, in conjunction with close physician interaction and involvement, uh, which, which we uh, take pride in maintaining in our laboratory, and we have on any given day eight cardiologists that are staffing our laboratory that are immediately involved and, and associated with the uh, acquisition of these, these images, these pictures, uh, is, is an important uh, 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 mantra of our, our laboratory and what we do every day. So I, I think that mm -hmm. interaction okay. uh, is, is uh, very important. Not, only is, not always the case in, in a lot of different places. Thing. They do operate uh, differently in, in some low uh, uh, centers, uh, but we feel that's critically important here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have anything to add, Helga, for when visitors come? Is there anything that you like to highlight and show? I'm just really proud of the relationship that we have with the physicians and to be able to go to them, that the sonographers feel comfortable to go to them with questions for them to ask and, feel, and get the information that they need to do the best job that they can do. And I, that doesn't happen everywhere and we take it for granted here. I fully believe that it's one of the best things. The one-on-one -on -one is probably the best way to learn that you can offer to anyone. Well, thank you both for joining us. I think you provided a lot of information, and um, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.